Now back to President Trump's pardon of a Bush administration official. In a statement, the president said he doesn't know Scooter Libby, but heard for years that he had been mistreated. I. Lewis Libby, who goes by Scooter, was Vice President Dick Cheney's chief of staff. He came under investigation in 2003 after speculation that he leaked the identity of secret CIA operative Valerie Plame to newspaper reporters. Plame's husband, former Ambassador Joseph Wilson, had criticized the Bush administration's rationale for invading Iraq. In 2007, a federal court found him guilty of four felonies, including lying to investigators and a grand jury and obstructing justice. Libby was sentenced to two and a half years in federal prison and a $250,000 fine. I had to make a very difficult decision. Before he went to prison, uh, President George W. Bush commuted his Charlie. sentence but rejected pleas from Cheney to pardon him. Before Libby's her. pardon, today Plame questioned Mr. Trump's motivations. This is definitely not about me. It's absolutely not about Scooter Libby. It's about Donald Trump and his future. The message being sent is you can uh, commit perjury and I will pardon you if it protects me and I, I deem that you are loyal to me. That's the pardon and its possible implications for the Russia investigation. We're joined by Richard Benveniste. He's a partner at the Washington office of Mayor Brown. He served on the 9-11 Commission, and he was chief of the Special Prosecutor's Watergate Task Force. Mr. Benveniste, thanks and welcome. First of all, what's your reaction to this pardon? I think it's the president flexing his pardon power. Uh, it also serves to poke a finger in the eye of the intelligence community. Uh, the uh, uh, disclosures relating to Valerie Plain that ended her career sec uh, e effectively as an undercover uh, operative, uh, case officer of the CIA, uh, was a big blow, and, uh, and they're feeling it. There was a lot made at the time during the trial that, that, that Libby was protecting the vice president. Is this a message, is a message being sent to people in the Russia investigation? I think the message is there, and it has been repeated often uh, before this pardon, that the president might exercise his pardon power with respect to individuals uh, such as uh, Mr. Flynn, such as Mr. Manafort, uh, and uh, such as perhaps uh, others who are caught up in the investigation of the Russian interference in the 2016 election. Uh, it's interesting to note that in Watergate, the offers of uh, presidential clemency that were secretly made to Watergate burglars were a part of the conspiracy uh, to obstruct justice. Here, in bright lights, there's a discussion of whether individuals who may have damaging information about the president uh, will be pardoned or subject to clemency. So. Could you make a, an obstruction of justice case, do you think? Well, it's a, it's a matter of the president's intent uh, in exercising a constitutionally given power, the power of the pardon, um, which is explicit. Uh, only if it is exercised for corrupt purposes and with a corrupt intent uh, would there be a violation of law. There's been a lot of talk about the president threatening or talking about uh, firing uh, the deputy attorney general uh, Rosenstein as a way of getting someone who might fire uh, Robert Mueller, the special counsel. It reminds a lot of people of the Saturday Night Massacre during Watergate. Would that amount to, I mean, could you make a, an obstruction of justice case out of that? You could, again, if there was evidence that the intention, uh, if such a firing were to take place, was corrupt, whether it was for the purpose of obstructing the investigation. And this seems like we don't know what's going on inside the special counsel's investigation. You've been inside a special counsel's investigation. It seems like a big week this week when we had uh, the raids on Michael Cohen's uh, office and residence and, and, and uh, the president's personal attorney. Does it feel to you, given your experience, that we're at a, 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 an important point in this investigation? Well, now we have tapes 
John, that are uh, alleged to have been made by Mr. Cohn. Uh, we don't know what's on them, and uh, we understand they've been seized. We have new information as a result of the U.S. Attorney's Office filing a response to Mr. Cohn's attorney's attempt uh, to uh, freeze the material and uh, keep it from the hands of the U.S. Attorney's Office. And uh, uh, there are so many parallels to Watergate now. We've had hush money, uh, tapes, uh, electronic uh, uh, interference with the uh, opposition party. Uh, now we have uh, the Russia uh, involved. So there's so much here uh, to unpack. Uh, and the special counsel is doing exactly what he should be doing in maintaining silence. There have been no leaks, uh, just as there were no leaks in Watergate, uh, where we had explosive information on the secret tapes that we obtained. Uh, yet, none of that leaked out. And that's just the way Mr. Mueller should be conducting his investigation. Richard Benveniste, former Watergate prosecutor, thanks so much. Thank you, John.